Hello and welcome to another Swift One. Just first to answer the question, I've had a few questions about why do I call it a Swift One. Well, these videos are meant to be quick, sharp, short, to the point, and not have loads of blabbering and irrelevant talking. Um, it just gets on with it and we cut to the chase. Right then, adding bars. If you'd like to add a bar, so here's my little demo piece, I'm going to click in here and highlight the whole of that bar. Now then, I'm going to add in a minute a bar after the bar I've highlighted. I'm going to insert an empty bar. You could do a right click if you wanted, a right click and select bar and then select single. But I can see the shortcut there, Control Shift B. So guess what? I'm into my shortcuts, I'm going to use the shortcut. So Control Shift B and there we go. There is the bar that has been added. I could add another bar just by repeating if I wanted to. There we go, just keep going, adding more and more. Now, I'm going to undo that because I don't want that in my little piece of music. There we go. I used Control Z, of course, to undo the actions I'd just done. Now, you might want to delete a bar. If you click in a bar like this and try to delete it, you will delete the notes, but you won't delete the bar itself. So, Control Z that again. Instead of clicking in the bar like this, Click in the bar, but hold down the control key. So here we go, control and click. Now if I hit delete or the backspace, the bar in its entirety has disappeared from my score. So there's my bar back again with control Z. Now then, you might want to add an upbeat, an anacrusis to give it its posh name. Let's add an upbeat, an anacrusis. This time I'm going to go right click bar and I'm looking at other this time. But I'm going to use, of course, Alt-B. So here we go, Alt-Letter-B. There it is. Now then, I'd like to add an irregular bar. That's going to be of an unusual length. How long is it going to be? It's going to be a quaver, because I'm going to have a quaver upbeat. Here it comes. Hit OK. Here's my quaver, and in it goes. Now, I may have missed the point with Sibelius, but rather annoying, um, rather annoyingly, it always gives you a four beat rest here. It defaults to that when you add an anacrusis, an upbeat. I want a quaver. I've got to change that to a quaver first. If I don't, Sibelius, for whatever reason, assumes I'm going to write a crotchet. Well, a crotchet won't fit. So if I play the note A, it gives me a crotchet with a quaver tied to a quaver. Well, that's not what I want. Control Z. So I'm going to use the keypad, this fella here, to change it to a quaver. Now I use the keypad, of course, that is copied on the keypad on your QWERTY keyboard as well. So I'd use the keyboard number three to do that. And there's my quaver. Now I can type in a note and there's my anacrusis, my upbeat. Now you might have noticed on that Alt B, you also have the chance to add many bars at one time. So you can add lots and lots of bars at one time if you so wish and where you click is where they start. Now let's control Z that, I don't want that. What comes next? Well, coloring notes. Oh, I'm a teacher, I teach lots and lots of people and um, coloring notes I use a great deal. So I'm teaching somebody here, they're having a lesson on harmony and things like that. I might show them that this is the triad of E. Now I'm going to color it, control J, control J and let's go nice pink color, there we go. And there's my triad, E, G sharp, B. On the important beats of the bar, that's the chord being implied by this scale. Then I might introduce them to this note and say, well, what about that one? Control J, let's make that one, um, what should we go? Let's go yellowy color, there we go. And that, of course, is the seventh, the dominant seventh in E. And then I might say, right then, what's this F natural doing on top? Control J, let's have the F natural in a nice tasty green, there we go. Now the F natural, if you're a jazzer, you might call that a flat nine. So here's our arpeggio. And then we add the seventh, and then the flat nine. There we go. That's the kind of way I'd use colors, but of course, there are endless applications that I'm sure you can think of. Multi-rests. Now at the moment, this group of three rests is individually expressed. I now want it to be a rest with a number three over the top. So I'm gonna type Control, Shift, and then the letter M for multi-rests. There we go, Control, Shift, M, and there are my multi-rests. And now they're gonna disappear because I'm gonna do Control, Shift, M again. There we go. 
Um, and lastly, selecting multiple objects. Sometimes you might want to select, well, different things at the same time. Hold down the control key. So I'm going to click on this E. I'm now holding down the control key. There we go. And I can also select rests. And of course, it's not something you'd really want to do, but if you did control shift H, it'll hide all those notes and rests. So they exist still, but they won't come out when you hit print. Obviously, that's not a very fine example because uh, you probably want to see all that, don't you? Um, but multiple selection, hold down the control key, click, control, hold it. There we go. That's it. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.